often people ask what is Tai Chi and the answer is very often a series of terms that relatively don't mean too much to anyone. They talk about styles, Yang style, Chen style, Wu style etc. But what do these mean and how useful are they? So today I'm going to talk very broadly about Tai Chi in different categories. Different categories rather than different names or different styles or schools and I hope by doing so that this is going to be of use to you if you're considering either starting a style or school or just taking up the art generally and want to know a little bit more about how they differentiate themselves one from the other. So the first category we are going to look at in this brief video is martial and I'm going to break this down into two camps because clearly Tai Chi originated as a martial art and there are those people that still argue today that if you if the martial element is missing or is removed from the curriculum then the art is nothing more than a an, an exotic version of Pilates. So there's generally two camps in this category as there is in all the categories you'll find out. Those that have been shown an application and those that have actually tested it out. Let me give you an example. Most people who have done a little bit of Tai Chi know that White Crane is a combination of two parries, upper and lower, but few have gone on to test it out and fewer have even found it particularly efficient. So there are those that argue that Tai Chi, like any martial art, should be tested in the ring with other fighters to prove it's actually of use. Now, of course, this is a gross generalization because we don't do that with all the other martial artists. You don't do it necessarily with karate and Aikido. But you need to ask yourself if you are looking for the martial element in Tai Chi, is it theoretical or practical for the street and ring? Okay, so that's briefly looking at the martial. Again, there's plenty of other nuances in that in those fields. And I will go into further detail in an article that will follow up from this video. But I wanted to give you a brief introduction to how we break up the martial elements into those that have a vague knowledge and those that are actually trying to test it out. If you're not interested in the martial, push that aside and we'll go on to the second category, which is health. Now in this second category, like the martial category, there are two different schools. And they fall into broad camps that really look at health in two different ways, Western and Eastern. Basically the traditional medical Chinese approach and the physiological or biological approach. Basically East and West approaches to, oh, there goes a plane. Let's look first at the TCM or traditional Chinese medical approach. This is based on an understanding and to some extent a belief in energy systems. Energy systems in the body such as acupuncture, meridians, channels, energy points, five element theories and a host of other traditional practices or means of understanding health in the body. Now, some people call all this nonsense. Others call it simply a useful metaphor, whilst others still focus on predominantly physiological and biological benefits they see Tai Chi offering. Not as an esoteric Eastern practice, but as an exercise rooted in verifiable studies and benefits that include breathing and balance and coordination and posture and structure and grounding and routine, all these sorts of things. A school focusing on one of these approaches may not necessarily negate elements of the other, but you need to discover for yourself where that emphasis lies. In the third category that I wanted to look at today, we've looked at martial, we've looked at health, 
I'd very briefly like to look at this final category and, and that is one of spirit and ideas and I'm trying to focus here on intention and again this category splits into two broad camps under the vague title of Taoism now Taoism as you most of you probably know is a Chinese philosophy that incorporates notions of duality and harmony and constant change. It can be taught in a more religious way or in a more philosophical way. Let me explain. The religious element I'm including here is not necessarily those of Taoist priests or lamas or monks, though of course it may include some, but rather those who aspire to attain some sort of enlightenment through their practice, through the study of the ancient Taoist texts. This in turn tends to overlap and define how they practice Tai Tai Chi, infusing that with the same sort of spirit as they're talking about through the study of the texts. The aim here is to seek a sort of unity or harmony with others through society, through the world at large, or perhaps even the greater universe. Of course, there's always some overlap with the philosophical Taoists, but also some areas of distinction too. It's here that I wish to really mm, focus on the philosophical approach and its interpretation for living and practicing Tai Chi in the 21st century. For it is the Taoist principles and their expression in the means of the Tai Chi form that present us with a, a very unique, in my opinion, toolbox for understanding, for engaging and interpreting the, the chaos of life around us. In fact, it provides us with all the tools necessary to handle crises, to dismantle dogma, and to distance ourselves from ideologues, especially those that claim a single truth or a single path to this truth. Instead, the philosophical Taoists seek what connects people and things and events and uh, creatures organic materials with the mind and body to explore new possibilities. They don't hark back to some sort of mythological golden era, but instead wish to use all tools to forge something new and better ahead of us. And that includes technology. As I say, all of these are broad categories to, to someone who approaches or offers training in Tai Chi. Now most of them are likely to have a foot in one camp and another foot in another camp so don't think everyone is delineated in this way, demarcated precisely in this way. Most of them are going to fuse and pick and mix elements as they wish. And that's what you're probably likely to find but it is probably of use for you to be clear about which of these you would like to focus on when you're looking to find a school or a teacher. And amongst each of those categories the categories within those categories that will help define where. How are you going to find a teacher like that? Well, you need to go and have a look. You need to go and stick your head into a training hall, ask the student questions, ask the teachers questions. Or online, contact teachers, contact schools, ask them what they're emphasising, what they're trying to teach, what they're trying to get over, and um, find out that way. The world is open for you to do that as and how you wish. So, hope this is going to be of use. I hope it's not too controversial for you. I hope you haven't been offended by some of the things I've said. I've tried to keep it diplomatic as best as I can. Got any comments? I'll stick this link up onto the forum. You can leave your comments there, chip in with whatever you think and feel, and I'll try and get back to you if you've got any direct questions. So, from this very cold January, I think it is freezing day in a Hertfordshire in the UK, which I shall be moving on away from in the next couple of days to a new area.
a film. I'll leave you now and uh, hopefully speak to you soon.